We are live. Whoa, listen to that audience. Uh, hello, all, and welcome back to uh, Sigil Spotlight. My name, as always, is Mr. Harlan Guthrie, and I'm here once again with the fantastic Ellen Abelt. How are you doing, Ellen? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. We have a wonderful guest. We got all this cool stuff going on. It's almost Halloween. I don't know where I am. Autumn hits hard. I love the uh, autumnal spirit that seems to just, you know, wash over you. You get that nice smell mix of like that sweet rotting leaves, but also <laughs> the chill in the air. And, and for some reason, there's always fire burning, no matter live, where you are. I live right by a farm field now, and they, they just oh. harvested yesterday. And so now we get the uh, just this faint hint of cow inexplicably. <laughs> cow did they show you when you were looking at the house did they like show you it in increments they were like okay well the wind is good yeah, let's go now and then they'll leave <laughs> kidding. like oh, don't worry no no because it doesn't it doesn't smell like cow until they harvest it and like turn up mm -hmm. everything um it's so it's, re it's really just like the the day or two and now now it's pretty good again but it was it wasn't it wasn't strong it was just like what is it just me or is that there's cow right <laughs> And when you say cow, you mean to say that it's just like that farm smell, not like yeah. it's a, it's not like a slaughterhouse or anything. No, no, no. It's just like it's not like <laughs> it's it's almost like edging towards manure. Like I mean, it is manure, right? Like yeah, it's, it's manure. but it's manure. like there's there's a little bit of like I don't know. I think of it as like that that state fair smell. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? And I totally get where you're coming from. And there's nothing. I mean, it's funny because we say oh, it smells like manure, and we're meant to kind of be. I guess, you know, shamed by that. But there is something really nice about that smell sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, like as long as no. you get away from it and it's not like super overwhelming, then it's fine. I mean, it's not like it's the smell is going to be strongest in the middle of the night, you know? It's not like yeah. you're waking up. It's not like a downstairs neighbor cooking or something like that. You're going to be fine for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. You go inside and it's gone. Like, okay, fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, Sigil Spotlight, the show where we highlight what's going on with Sigil as well as we bring on an amazing guest. Today, we are going to have artist John Taylor on, uh, super talented, who's been with Sigil for a long time. But before we get to that, uh, in terms of new releases, I, I guess we're a bit light this week, right? Yeah, we are finishing up some stuff. We don't have confirmed release dates, but probably by the next time we stream, we'll have news for you for maybe maybe if everything comes together both roll 20 and foundry whoa that's a double whammy for all you vtt's last week we had on a guest who was really expertly guiding us through how vtt's are going to be changing the landscape and how they currently are so uh you know if that didn't convince you nothing will to switch to it mind you pandemic seems to be i mean where i am again this is, <laughs> this is very different depending on where we are but where i am in the world the pandemic's becoming less serious thankfully a lot of people are getting vaccinated so yeah. in-person games are coming back a little bit so that's exciting too i think yeah. i don't know maybe i'm just celebrating yeah no I've, I've never had like so all of the like stable games that i've had have always been online so like all of the stuff i've had in person has always Whoa. it's been like here's a weird software them. where none of us know what's happening <laughs> You never had that moment where you disagree with somebody and then it gets really awkward and quiet around the table and you have nowhere to go to. Because you can just log off. <laughs> lucky. Lucky. No, uh, we, anyway. We definitely I, had that. Good. I do know that we have some... Uh, I think they are nearing completion on the AOR, which is the Augmented Opera Operators Reservoir. Res no res idea. Res that's you. It's the word. It's like a thing, you know, where you like take names. It's like a list. Anyway. Reserve registry. Registry. I think that's it. Augmented operative registry. It is obviously for S5E, the Kickstarter. It has been collected. It is being edited and being sort of bound as we speak, to my knowledge. So anybody who is uh, excited about the Kickstarter, which should be everybody if you like superheroes, which nowadays is everybody. Uh, then uh, that's going to be coming hopefully not too far in the future, as well as uh, the Tuesday weekly game that I am running uh, with five, or am I including myself? Wonderful People uh, is back on Tuesday at 7.30. Again, we had to take off this week because we lost a player. Uh, they were just feeling into the weather. But we are going to be back this Tuesday with more Hereafter. And again, if you haven't watched it yet, Hereafter is our... Uh, 
basically our D&D 5e campaign. It's a homebrew setting, but it has strong connections to some, let's just say, forthcoming sigil products. He'll say yeah, very no. not ominously, but like <laughs> kind of ominously. Uh, so you might want to check that. And if you enjoy D&D and if you enjoy hanging out and being real chill, uh, then you can hang out and watch. It's a very interactive show. This isn't no critical role. They're on season three, apparently, or something. I don't know. I don't watch that. But, like, you right, know, yeah. very casual. Don't say anything bad about Critical Role. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, 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 I've i tried it. I just, like, I <gasps> it didn't click. I, 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 I haven't even tried it. I'm even worse than that. So I was looking. I tried it. I was looking for something to stream while I was doing homework back in college. And it was it didn't work <laughs> it didn't back work in college use case. critical role was on you're dating yourself and you're making me feel very old so uh i think that's it <laughs> in terms of that conversation uh but yeah i think that's it in terms of releases i don't think there's anything else that came out obviously last week we talked about the deadlands and all that stuff but i think that's it right yeah no i think i think it's yeah lots of stuff in progress but not anything finished perfect well that's okay because it just means we get to bring on our guest a little earlier ladies and gentlemen please Welcome to the virtual floor. I'm Mr. John Taylor. <laughs> oh! Hey. Well, we're ready. This is that crowd. Hello. Wow. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And nice uh, you. happy to introduce you to all of the lovely people that are going to be watching this post. How many people watch live because it's like one o'clock in the afternoon? And yeah, welcome to the internet. <laughs> welcome to the internet, everybody. So, John, uh, I guess start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? And, and you know, what do you, what occupies your your days uh mostly working um so yeah i'm john i've worked for sigil i had to look this up i've worked for sigil since 2014 i think is the first piece i can find wow um wow. and i do artwork for them um and we're sort of looking at branching out into other things but it, it's generally been finding time so i'm, I'm looking at um a motion comic at the moment um just working on the script for that that's very cool that's fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, um, I've, uh, this is kind of, um, I'm, I'm trying to make this my full time job, not necessarily with Sigil, but certainly illustration work. It's something I've always wanted to do. My background um, has been in computer games um, up until uh, about 2015. And since then, it's been in sort of attraction and theme park design. Wow! So wow! You get a bit of a mixed jobs. bag, but, um, <laughs> but drawing bag. dragons is where is where I'm at, I suppose. So. I was going to say, but all of those mixed bag, they're exciting elements. It's not like, oh, yeah, I worked yeah, yeah. at a water cooler company and then I I tilled a lawn. You're like, oh, you know, video games, theme parks, you know, mm. and then graphic novel aspirations. It's a really exciting uh, lineup. Uh, it's better than working for a living, that's for sure. But um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I what think kind of uh, I mean, PC games did you did you were you involved in? Um, nothing great. That's, <laughs> that's the problem. Oh no. Um, uh, well, I mean, I mean, I put it. I, I worked on the uh, game version of Catwoman. You know, the uh, the okay. um, incredibly successful Halle Berry movie. Oh so yeah. It gives that's you cool. it gives you a kind of idea of the caliber of, of, of games that I've worked on. I mean I did I did work on the um the very, very first little bit, Grand Theft Auto, but that was before they moved it into three D. Oh, like the top down. Oh, I yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great game. Um, which dates me, obviously. But um <laughs> Don't worry, we can push past. That's awesome. <laughs> and then well, when you mentioned theme parks, I was wondering, I was like, did you have something? Because I know there's a series of games that have like the roller coaster tycoon, I think. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. There, was there, was there a crossover um, there? I was curious. No, none whatsoever. No. Uh, there's just a, a weird thing that um my ex art director knew a guy from basically because their kids were at the same school who wanted mm -hmm. some concept art doing and, and it turned out that he was involved with um that, that's what he did they were they were building a sort of indoor um computer game base to be fair uh, but an indoor sort of theme park in dubai and they wanted somebody to come in and do some visualizations and, oh, cool. and, and you know um so I, I did some um basically they built the models and you did sort of paint overs to show how it all looked and then that sort of transition so now i i, I um you know work on everything from theming design through to the actual sort of content and things like that so um wow that's cool how fantastic is that yeah, yeah so now really you're obviously doing primarily illustration and things like that and trying to you know 
what are some of the uh, recent pieces uh, that you're sort of most excited about? Are there anything that you can speak openly about? It can be sigil or maybe sigil adjacent that uh, that you're really excited about. To dive yeah, in. with the sigil stuff. Uh, I mean, the last thing I, I worked on was the, um, I guess it's for Pinnacle, the uh, the sort of supers um, stuff. So I did some character coloring for that and I got a few, um, I think they're half pages, quarter pages, something like that, wow. which has been, I, you know, it, it, it's it's quite often finding the time. So when that stuff gets thrown my way, I, I do get very excited about it. <laughs> um, and this motion comic, you said you're sort of, sort of, Playing yeah, around with writing a script there right now. And what I can talk about. I mean, I don't. I, I guess it's no great secret, but um, it's it's based on Kringle Down. You know the um... Shane Hensley. Yeah, yeah. So that's I'm awesome. Looking, looking that's at the so bad. on that. So. Did you did you end up hearing the Sound Booth Theater audio version of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 well, that's sort of what I'm working from. So I'm trying to take oh, elements from the audio and and so that. And, so that uh, audio, I did all of the sound effects on it. Oh, did you? Right. Yeah. Small world. Small world. Yeah. So, yeah. so because what I do is I do audio dramas, and I I'm primarily in the audio. I, well, I've been listening to Malevolence actually. Which, oh, um, <laughs> there you go. So they, yeah. so that's, is that's is that, is that yeah. you doing the uh, the are, are you Arthur Lester then? I'm everything. Yeah. I, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's everything in that show. Your British is, accent is better than mine, you know, but. Um, <laughs> That you're the first, listen, you're the first person in the UK to say that because every single person has been like, this is a terrible, terrible accident. <laughs> I'm like, it's passable. No, every everything in Malevolent uh, from top to tail, I do. It's, it's a oh, right. Okay. That's, a, that's impressive. Yeah, well, hey, if you ever want to do a motion uh, motion graphic on <laughs> Well, Malevolent, it'd be, it'd be good to get some stems off you for the uh, for the, the motion comics. So. Absolutely. Hey, you and I talk. Absolutely. After, yeah. after this. That's so funny. Talk about a small world, though. Yeah. Uh, Especially with the Kringle with the Kringle Down angle, that's that's hilarious. So that's that's exciting. I mean, Kringle Down is such a action packed. Uh, and Ellen, just to inform you and the viewer, obviously, Kringle Down is a short story written by Shane Hensley, uh, and it was uh, released through Pinnacle Publishing, obviously their own, their own little thing. And and then Sound Booth Theater, which is an audio company that's been doing a lot of the stories. In fact, they're one of the stretch goals uh, that we've unlocked with S Five E. They record the novels and then add sound effects to certain one of them or short stories i should say and uh, they've done a number for pinnacle over the years they just did uh, a series of the weird wars uh, which features a lot of authors other people that we've had on here kevin and andrew murphy for one mm -hmm. and uh so so now it looks like we're sort of toying with the idea of taking kringle down to the next level which is is really exciting and uh, so what can you kind of divulge about about how that might be? Um, it's still early days. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to divulge that, to be honest. But um... it's OK. It's OK. I'll, if anything, I'll say I pulled it out. I pulled it out <laughs> of gone. So everyone, everyone watching, just delete that from your memory right now. So we'll just say motion comic X. Either way, exciting possibilities and exciting ideas. And I'm loving Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, I mean, you know, I've been talking to Aaron over the years about, you know, lots of things like this. And I know he's always been very keen to sort of take Sigil in, in other directions. And yes, I mean, obviously, yeah. in, in, in my background, you know, I've got a lot of experience in sort of um, 3D animation and, you know, all that sort of stuff as well. So I, it feels like there's sort of like lots of possibilities you, you, you could take these places. And, Absolutely. Obviously, you know, tech's sort of ever increasing across the board. So, That's yeah, no, it's exciting. So, in terms, of, well, I guess, uh, Ellen, you were going to ask a question. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, so you definitely predate us at Sigil by quite a ways, and so we we're kind of wondering, uh, how did you get started with Sigil? How did you, you know, run into Aaron and get uh, mm. get involved with all of that? Um. Can't remember to be honest. Um, it was. <laughs> So I, I I joined a startup company as an art director. We 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 made a game um, with Snoop Dogg called um, Way of the Dog. And okay. Imagine, um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was going to be this. It was a great idea actually. The guy behind it, um, you know, had this amazing idea that it it was going to be a sort of uh, rhythm action beat em up. So okay. you know, like, like you sort of um, I can't remember it was on mobile stuff. So I can't remember, but you'd sort of you know tap to the rhythm and stuff yeah, and yeah, yeah. Pull yeah. Off the great martial art moves and it was all about the story of snoop dogg who who well it was it was his acolyte so snoop dogg was the grand master who sat in the dojo 
Um, he was going through an identity crisis at the time. He wanted to be known as Snoop Lion, so there was all a lot of toing and proing over. I I remember that. That's yeah. That's it never really true. came off. Yeah. Again, but, I remember um, that. that was, yeah. Anyway, long story short, that studio <laughs> went down. Um, you know the 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 game was ambitious and the budget was tight and you know lots and lots of corners got cut and I sort of um, suddenly found myself unemployed. Um, and I was, you know, I, I had some sort of work in the bag, but I thought, well, this, this is a golden opportunity to um, do, you know, I'd always sort of wanted, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it in a bit, actually, with my first job, um, but I'd always kind of wanted to do a bit of sort of fantasy illustration, so um, I started sort of looking around at other people's work and sort of following their posts and seeing what companies they mentioned, and I just sent stuff out to a load of places and um, didn't get very much back, obviously. I mean, you know, wizards and, and that sort of thing are quite hard gigs yeah. to get anyway. Um, and, and Aaron came back and was just totally lovely and said, you know, I just had a blast looking at your stuff and and gave me a piece and, and uh, uh, it was a spaceship, you know, he just said, oh, it's a massive cathedral-like spaceship with these animals in it and stuff. Oh, cool. And, and I did that, and I had no idea if I was doing it right. And I <laughs> agonized over it for about three days and sent it back in thinking, oh, God, you know. And he went, oh, that's great. And then I think the next one was for um, ETU. Okay. Oh. Uh, which was Pigzilla. Oh, cool. <laughs> Pigzilla, or I can't remember which one. But, yeah, massive pig crashing through. And and then, you know, I got some more ETU stuff, and I sort of thought, oh, I'm, I'm doing this now. That's, that's really nice. <laughs> surprise and, yeah and it, and it sort of really started taking off but um so uh, i i had children quite late in life and um they're quite expensive so i was sort of doing this work and doing other bits on the side but my main gig sort of fell through um uh, and and aaron had just sort of you know um, given me a big sort of job so it was um seven worlds seven planets i can't remember okay and I was supposed to be sort of like working through that and uh, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I, I just couldn't find the time. I had to go and get a job, unfortunately. Mm. So sort of took a bit of a hit at that point. But, you know, again, he's, he's you know, he was very understanding about the whole thing and he's just been uh, a very wonderful guy to work with all these years. So, And That's a leader, good. I do a lot. I get a lot from a leader these days as well. So. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, no, a leader, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's interesting too because I think Aaron has this uh and we're going to compliment aaron for a second so i'm glad he's not watching live but aaron mm -hmm. does have this tendency to you know to help out in a way you know like like i was a very similar story i you know i lost my job aaron was looking for somebody to to help with a few things and he really gave me a shot mm -hmm. uh, when no one else was and so uh He's a really fantastic person and and everything that's come afterwards has been you know in large part thanks to his generosity yeah. but now, now let's stop because he's gonna he's gonna be very oh, yeah, no, that, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. also we don't want to you know give him too big of an ego so no absolutely um, <laughs> so well, i mean it, it sort of starts earlier because I, I um i mean when i started out and you know when i when i got my first creative job i was I thinking about 1995 um and i had this friend who was a goth because there were a lot of them around in the 90s and he had this friend who was a goth and he worked in a game studio like drawing comics or something and he said oh do you want to go and meet him and i turned up and uh, you know to meet him for what i thought was an informal chat and he sort of said where's your work and i said i, I didn't know i had to bring any <laughs> whoops uh give me some paper <laughs> and then he said it doesn't matter because the boss fired everybody this morning and i said oh i'm sorry to hear that are you okay and he went oh, it happens every three weeks at the moment um oh anyway he said we're, we're doing this thing uh, where we need to draw some cell animation for a game can you do that and i said oh, i don't know i've never tried can i have two weeks to try and, and i went away and drew some stuff and came in and my drawings worked and and I got a gig doing concept art, and uh, that guy who gave me the job turned out to be Wayne Reynolds. Oh, who, oh thank you. You might have heard of. So I'd spent a couple of years, you know, um, sort of working with him and um, sort of always wanted to do that. You know, I mean, when he sort of took off, I mean, it was originally into comics when he took off, but, um, you know, um, then shortly after sort of the D&D the &D work and then Pathfinder and stuff really sort of picked up for him, so yeah wow I, no, think, I think that's probably where the original impetus came from that's, that's awesome cool. 
So, and, and I mean, on that note, obviously, as you sort of stretched out, you've mentioned a few times that, you know, art is really your passion as well. And I'm curious, and Ellen and I were talking about this before, too, when it comes to sort of the business side of doing illustration, you know, obviously, it's a completely different world versus the personal side of it. And I guess we're curious, sort of, well, Ellen, you framed it better than I did. Yeah, so it's like, I so... The, in the artistic circles that I kind of run adjacent to, there's the people who do art just sort of for its own sake, for their own personal projects and stuff like that. And they haven't really monetized it. And then there's the people who go, no, I want to sell art. I want to make a living at this. Mm -hmm. And they have to pick up a little bit more of a business angle on it. And it's it seems like to very different mindsets and two very different approaches. And we were just kind of wondering how... I guess how how you do you balance that and how does that you know doing that how does that differ as somebody who actually is an artist of doing personal projects versus you know okay no I have to do this you know, this business side of it how do you balance that and work that in? Um, it's a really good question. It's a really variable question. I mean, you you compromise a lot is is the answer. Um, not so much. I mean, one of the things I, I love about this kind of work, um, you know, with Sigil or others, is, is this is the stuff I do for the love. And mm -hmm. to be honest, this is the stuff that gets quite a light touch in terms of editing and stuff that, I mean, you know, there's, there's often feedback and, and people, you know, want something that they're, they're very much trying to get their vision, you know, and, and you're a toolbox to that. Um, but on the whole, this is quite easy compared to some of the other things I do, which can be quite excruciating. And I mean, there's nothing else I've ever wanted to do. I mean, funnily enough, I think the, the games probably came came before the art. I mean, the art's always been a sort of means to an end in many ways that it's about world building or, or setting a seed or realizing characters or just, you know, it, it, it's an output of imagination. And, and, and I suppose that's the way it's sort of manifested um, for me, although, you know, I mean, you know, that's the nature of doing other things that you you know you've I got into computer games because I thought great I can build whole worlds or you know yeah there's always something else um yeah I mean when it's your living realistically you, you you to a certain degree have to do what you're told I mean what I've found as I've got more and more experience is I'm able to go into situations again not so much with this but with other things and sort of tell them what they want because quite often people come to you as clients and they don't have a particularly clear idea yeah and that's where you can sort of add value that you're sort of making suggestions and and, and in that way you can kind of drive it towards something that might that be easier to be. want to do yeah um but i mean the the joy of something you know again like sigil is you get i mean it, it's the purest thing for me it, it's not you know it's not zed brush or 3d studio max or all the other stuff it's just it's photoshop and it and it's a whack on tablet these days but it is you know you and a blank canvas and an idea and somebody's saying you know right um there's this guy and he's holding three expressions simultaneously while a, a creature that is both you know awesome but also unclear is rearing up in front of him and you know there's all this detail behind and you're sort of going right you know how do i make that happen and which bits of it are actually important and you know that's interesting too because obviously you've established an amount of trust you know specifically with sigil as well too so i i imagine that there's a bit of you know however you see this best john let us know type thing obviously there's a bit of back and forth but it, it is you know gets to be a bit on your shoulders in terms of that and in that way it's almost like a writing prompt you know what i mean someone's like here here's here's the idea here's how it could look but you yeah. get freedom with that no well, it's an interesting thing. I mean, uh, you, uh, in in the case that you are sort of create, I mean, quite often, you know, there's a there's a bunch of archetypes, and they're sort of saying use this character and this character in a scene, and here's a monster, and and that stuff's done for you. But I mean, in in other terms, it, it can be like a concept art gig, which, you know, are quite expensive in other industries. I mean, as you know, to work as a concept artist in games, you know, you could be charging a lot of money and produce some stuff that will never get used at the end of the day yeah so you know um so i mean i guess to some degree that that's kind of why it's easier and there's not the same sort of demands of this it needs to be refined and refined and refined and it needs to work in this way and it needs to work as a model and it needs to work at you know it needs to have this outline it needs to work at 17 different resolutions um 
which must get really frustrating trying to work backwards from that level of of detail that's needed in the end result, you know, because it's something that you have to be mindful of at the very. Well, I, I mean, I think I think that's one of the mindsets that you sort of talk about in, in terms of doing it for a living, that you can't go in thinking about all of it. You have to say, you know, here's my patch of sand and here's my flag and this is where I'm starting. Mm -hmm. And then you do something so, and you let it spread out from there. And then uh, in terms of that, just to, to focus on that for a second, you know, in the terms of like a passion project, do you find yourself you know, working on something on the side, like, do you have that element where, yeah, maybe you're drawing all day and then you turn to something else and you're like, okay, now I get to I get to work on something like that. Or does it sort of kill a bit of the joy when you're doing it for most of the day? I mean, I, it's something I remember. I mean, I remember sort of somebody saying when I went to college, you know, that you, you might think you enjoy art now, but, you know, remember you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life if you're lucky. Um, you know, and and it and it's going to get wearing. And and the truth is, it never has. I've never lost hmm. the joy. But there are projects that drag on <laughs> and on and on. Um, the ones you don't miss. Yeah, and, and I mean, there was a point um, where I was sort of, you know, I was doing lots of independent comics. You know, basically work for free just to sort of see them published and stuff. And, and they were definitely passion projects. In terms of my own stuff. Um, I mean, I made a children's book, which was probably the last thing. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's self-published, but um. So, What's it called? Yeah, it's called a jug full of Doug. It's on Amazon if anybody wants to look it up. But um. Jug full of Doug. Yeah, D O U G. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Let's let's uh, drop a link here. But um. Amazon.ca. But I'll just drop the name for everybody. But I, I, and, the, and the truth is, I mean, I'm, I'm working on, you know, three jobs at the moment. There's, there's something I'm doing um, for Sigil through a leader. There's something I'm doing for um, a company that makes trailers for games, which um, which is uh, which is great. They said, we want you to paint a dragon. And I thought, oh, it's brilliant. Nobody's ever asked me to paint a dragon. Uh, and I did that. And it's like, now we want you to cut it into layers so we can puppet it. Now, you know, we want this character. So, you know, it, it's... It's one of those things that it's a wonderful bit of work. And I kind of like that um, messing about with stuff and making it work in other mediums anyway. But it's also quite, it's quite difficult to keep your enthusiasm. So, you know, I've found myself um, on, on on that sort of project getting, you know, thinking I'm just going to do a bit on this, on this, you know, other work for Sigil because that's more exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's nice it's to have that. Exciting. Exciting. And, and then and then there's my day job. So I'm coming off, you know, like um, 18 months on and off furlough back into sort of doing what what is, you know, my full time job at the moment and, and, until I can, you know, uh, make something else happen, um, which is, you know, mostly the sort of theme parks and stuff again. And um, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's fantastic. It's really, really, really good art. That looks fantastic. Um, so I yeah. just want to go back. You said, so you've been working in doing like fantasy illustrations and stuff like that for quite a while now, and no one's ever asked you to do a dragon before. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I think, well, they go to the good guys, you know, I mean, there's, <laughs> there, there are, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I worked in the shadow of Wayne Reynolds for quite a while. I, I, you know, I know what it's like. There are some people who are just born to paint dragons. Um, so, so what are you? But, yeah, they don't, they don't come up that much anymore, do they? I mean, uh, 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 there's not a lot of sort of sigil work with dragons in, is there? We need no, more I guess dragons, sigil, is what sigil we're in particular, I guess, has kind of branched out to other places rather than that that pure fantasy. So, yeah. what art? So, if you aren't born to be the dragon painter, what are you born to paint? What, what do you do well, a lot I'm of? Born to paint? I don't know. I'm still. I mean, I think this is a problem with 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 spreading yourself a bit thin. Is I, you know, I want to get to a point in my life where I'm just sort of doing this and, and I get a lot more time to sort of put into it. Um, um, I've just been doing a lake monster. Actually. I think I'm quite good at water. So maybe I, maybe I should concentrate. <laughs> on, 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 there on you water. go. A lake monster. But but I, I, like you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. There were a lot of, I feel like a lot of underwater like things that were people were working on this summer. I feel like in various like Kickstarters and stuff like that. What are you talking about? There's been a lot of underwater monsters. People. I feel, no, up. I feel like I maybe it was, was just I heard a lot of people talking about like maybe I should do something with like ocean, but like I definitely heard a lot of people talking about like wanting to do like pirate stuff or under the sea stuff and stuff like that. You know like what? That. It's because everyone was stuck inside for the past two years and they all are dreaming of beaches and now they want to get out and pretend they're sailing. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe none of this stuff. It. 
actually got released. I just remember hearing a lot of people talking about it. So, you know, maybe your time is coming. <laughs> your t- the the oh, well, water yeah. age is upon us. The age of Aquarius, as they'd say. Well, um, I noticed with I'm, the Supers launch, actually, they sort of stuck Doomguard at the end of it, which I, I actually did some work on a, a, a long oh, cool. time. I mean, I was working with Simon Lucas doing a, a, a board for that. So I don't, I don't know if it's going to keep that form or if it's going to be something else, but that was quite exciting and that was obviously um i think one of my illustrations is on that so that's um cool. which was originally um the kraken wrecking brighton pier i was going to do as a series of postcards but turned into cthulhu somewhere along the way <laughs> oh i i don't like cthulhu he said sarcastically loudly um i have to ask so you so you mentioned this all sort of started with games so first and foremost do you are you still a pc gamer or have it sort of waned lately uh, I, I, I don't do, um, it started with, with role playing. I mean, it started with, you know, Steve Jackson, Ian Livingstone, choose your own adventure books and then oh, tunnels and trolls and then dungeon and dragons. And so purely like paper and like, yeah, paper. I mean, I, I didn't really, I mean, you know, I mean, I was born in 1971 computers were not the same sort of thing when I was growing up. I mean, when I got my first job, I was, I was honestly amazed that there were whole groups of grown men and women sitting in rooms making computer games. I, I presumed it was still just people doing them out of the bedrooms. So, you know, the fact that it's turned into this sort of behemoth industry was, was news to me, but no, I was never really a computer game fan. I was uh, board games and stuff like that. And, and and tabletop and um and it's not uh, yeah i used to play quite a lot when i was younger but it's not even the playing it was more sort of obsession with rule books and obsession with settings and things like that and sort of spend a lot of time probably spent longer creating adventures than than, than any that were ever played you know and, and they were all meticulously detailed You're a world builder yeah i think so and then the art sort of you know grew out of that really but um i mean it makes sense that's the most imaginative part of the game are you still finding yourself turning to board games or role-playing games often do you play board games with your partner or your family i don't don't get to play i haven't played anything i think the last role-playing game i think um a friend of mine when i was back in um london which is over a decade ago he resurrected some warhammer um which was great i mean that was a great game he ran it really well and it was you know quite sort of nostalgic i mean i also um grew up um around nottingham in the uk which is where games workshop and citadel and all that was sort of based so it was quite exciting we go on the factory visits and go and scoop handfuls of deformed miniatures <laughs> <laughs> you know Willie, you... Willie Walker and, the, and the poisonous metal factory but do you see maybe a resurgence now with your kids being you know younger but getting to that age now yeah they- yeah i tried um starport on them i don't know yeah. if you've seen that but i, I tried no, that one not long ago um it's a table topper board game mixed results we're, we're just getting into board games my, my youngest is just um he, he he wanted um do you remember ghost castle or it's sort of you had a ball bearing that you dropped down a chimney and it set off some booby traps Oh, I've seen games like that, not that particular one. No. Um, I mean, it was quite, oh, wow. I remember it from when I was young, and, and I think they've reissued it. And um, it's a terrible game in many ways. But what's exciting <laughs> about it is that, well, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's snakes and ladders, but with the, the element of dropping a ball down a chimney that might drop an axe off. on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the artwork's incredible, you know, so you, you get all this folded cardboard and it's like the old sort of, you know, you remember the cardboard Death Star you used to get a long time ago. So you, you build this castle out of all folded, beautifully printed cardboard. And then there's these plastic bits that go on and these meticulous booby traps and, you know, you basically sort of walk. love that stuff. We used to play like mouse trap as a kid, yeah. you know, yeah, so yeah. trap, and then head. you wouldn't do anything with it. You just sort of like take it apart again. Never played but, the yeah, game. The, the board games are coming, and I think you know th- there is that. I mean, it's it's a great way to sort of spend. It's a great way to sort of get to know your kids anyway, and spend time with people to sort of sit around and and, and sort of have that arbitrary focus, you know, and 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 be different people and explore your relationship with one another and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I mean it's definitely, you know, that that experience that it that it came from. Computer games I played later in life, partly out of obligation to the job and then partly because well, they're just addictive, aren't they? But the, but the ones I always liked was, you know, the Skyrims and Oblivions and stuff like that. So that would just eat up two hundred hours of, of time that I, I don't have anymore. And I've decided <laughs> for that reason not to um in fact, Aaron um, sort of convinced me to put, um, oh, what's he called? The sci-fi one. Um, 
mass effect on this i, I oh. bought a new computer recently with a you know th uh, rtx 3090 graphics card and put mass effect Ooh. on it and um that was a mistake because <laughs> you spent too much time or because you haven't touched it Be because I, I i could feel it you know it was just gonna be one of those things that i'll just put it on for an hour and then it's 3 a.m and you haven't you know yeah you know, just like what happened so where did that go yeah i figure i figure i've got a few more years of penance and then i'll get back to that side of things but um Fair enough. Uh, I mean, Mass Effect's a great game, though, and they just re-released it on PC. They did the yeah, whole yeah, that's that's yeah. That's, that's, it's real Fair pretty. Enough. So you yeah, say but, you uh, you still collect a bunch of like rule books and the world building and stuff like that. Are there any particular favorites that you really enjoy that you feel like were really well done? Mm. If you haven't gotten a chance to play them, even just the art, maybe. Um, I mean, uh, in, interestingly, um, Savage Worlds is, is is the thing I'm sort of most interested in at the moment. That I, you know, I like I like the sort of feel of it from what I've, and. I mean, I've, I've looked at that one with some interest because the majority of the work I do um, tends to be for Savage Worlds. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like. I mean, it's, it's it's. I mean, I suppose you know D and D and and Warhammer and stuff like that were a lot sort of you know more kind of mechanics heavy. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm interested. I I did look at sort of. I mean, again with the kids because it was all I could do at the time. I was looking, seeing if I could sort of convert it to something light and set it up for Paw Patrol or whatever they were into that week. Oh uh actually we have somebody we should hook you up with i know who does a lot of conversions for his oh, kids right, okay. and yeah, he yeah. does like um oh god what did he do Who's i'm this? trying to remember but he, uh this uh uh gosh i'm losing names now there's so many j names <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> too, many j too many j's yeah um no joe yeah joe who we had on last week uh, oh yeah, yeah he okay. does a lot with right. his kids I know he did like a like a princess game with his like youngest daughter or something. That's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he. I'm running, or I run. Uh, I don't know if you tried it, but for my four year old, because again, I'm I'm big into trying to find the space for him to feel feel creative and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And obviously, with our backgrounds as being, you know, role players and stuff, I find it's a great opportunity. So we got No Thank You Evil. Have you played that or heard of it? No, I don't know that. It's, uh... it's a Monty Cook. It's a Monty Cook game. And oh, it's yeah. specifically geared towards children. It's a children's role-playing game. Um, and it's fantastic. It's really, really good. No thank you, Evil. I couldn't recommend it enough yeah, for what it ahead. does uh, in terms of teaching kids sort of the fundamentals of role-playing without making them, like, worry about... All the yeah. for real yeah, though, like they use tokens. A, a, a fairy riding on a dinosaur. So that's, that's exactly this is that's the same yeah. a game of make believe for creative kids and their families. Five, two to five. Like we played it with my partner. She played a character, and then who she's an avid, avid, avid role player. And then my mm. son, you know, and all it's all like the stuff that as I'm running it. I'm like, that's it's so obvious that they would add such a great idea. Well, not obvious, but I mean to say, like, oh, I get, you know, like every character gets a pet. You know, it doesn't really make any advantage, but my son went all over the little T Rex. He's like, Oh, I need I need the T Rex with me. You know? and like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's one of the things Starport did that sort of a, a, a attracted me to it, but just I don't know, it didn't quite capture their imaginations. I think the first adventure they had and I didn't have time to do anything else was like robots and stuff, and they were like this and I think the thing I was really imp impressed with, no, thank you, is it's so kitty in a way. Yeah. Like it's so like bubblegum, you know, like like Queen Bee who gives them honey and and mm -hmm. and and it says, you know, give your child a candy at this point if you're okay with it, so they can eat the candy when they're ready to return home. Like it's it's yeah. so geared towards kids, which is is so perfect for him because and really creative, you know, like you press a button and out pops a frog man who croaks and he answers any question you'll ask him. And it was really, really great. It was one of my yeah, favorite yeah. playing with him moments. So I'm, 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 I'm going to look into, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have a look at that. Yeah. So, for so anybody watching that has kids and, and are interested in, or friends who really like the simple, I mean, there's really no, you know, it's definitely geared towards kids, but you can play it everyone. It's kind of funny, like when we get into these conversations, because I feel like I'm sort of like in between you guys generationally in terms of mm -hmm. like, when I was growing up, so my dad did role-playing games like way back in the day. Um, and 
but there wasn't really that sort of geared towards kids thing when my brother and I were growing up. So we didn't hit it until my brother found his old player's box for a D and D in the basement when we were in like Mm. middle school. And like, that was the first time that we really started playing those games. Like we played some video games and stuff. I remember putting so many hours into like super Mario sunshine, but (laughs) So it's it's yeah, funny now. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's funny now to like talk about like like how much that that side of things of the like no let's let's get little kids into this like h- how much that's beefed out and how much is available now that like I definitely would have you know loved to have and was missing when I was growing up. Well, I suppose it's seeing the whole sort of industry grow up with you. I mean, it's, it's yeah. what always happens, isn't it? I mean, it's a sort of you know. I suppose the reason, you know, games sort of skew older as well these days and comics and, you know, everything sure. else. Yeah, everyone's growing older, you know. it's. I always think of, like, the Harry Potter books, you know. You think of, you read the yeah. first one and then you read the last one and they are entirely different books. Oh, yeah, no, like, they shouldn't be shelved next to each other. <laughs> That's, well, it's just, it's it's wonderful because I always use that as a, a as an example of, of a medium growing with its audience, which I yeah. think is really mm-hmm. Which is really interesting concept, but just in general, the you know the world has gotten so much smaller in terms of how easy it is to communicate. I.e., we're on a call right now with someone on the other side of the pond, you know. But it's really great to because so many people have got to create so much more, whether it be music or audio or art. You know, I think the this resurgence of of it's also made it difficult, frankly, to find. You know, and we're There's talking about so PC much. games. There is a hugely oversaturated market in PC games right now. And it's good for many, many reasons because the AAA titles that could get away with kind of shitty practices can no longer do that without large internet scoring. They still do it. But then you also sometimes have a tough time wading through piles and piles of other games to find really hidden gems too. But it also means that there's so much more room for like people to play. So like a lot of those AAA games and stuff like that, I don't like them. I liked Skyrim. I don't like Oblivion. Um, I don't know why. I just don't. <laughs> um, this is older. Oblivion it prob- really probably <laughs> I am a little bit of a graphics snob. <laughs> um, That's fair. Which is hilarious considering I also never want to update my PC. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, there was, so Oblivion was the first one. I, I, I mean, I, I've always looked, I'm always looking for something that got anywhere close to the sort of role playing experience. And Oblivion, I sort of started and I, I thought, oh, I've got no idea what I'm doing here. I was just wandering around. And I thought, okay. I'm going to impose my own story on this and I just sort of you know and I did and that that's what worked for it that it, it was it was open enough with enough of a sort of you know backstory in it that, that you could sort of do that in a way that I think Skyrim didn't Skyrim really tried to sort of take control of the story a lot more yeah and it was beautiful but it didn't work for me as well for that reason you know that I so. ended up modding the hell out of Skyrim to do that but mm. and the same with Fallout because I, I really liked Fallout 3 but Fallout 4 they imposed a protagonist that that talked and I I the day I bought it I was like no and I modded it so that it got rid of the voice and it got rid of the thing because yeah like you I'm somebody who really enjoys imposing my own storyline mm. on somebody you know I played Skyrim start to finish probably three or four times now with very you know with variants you know See, although I've never finished, finished the, I've never finished the main I put so much like into it and all of the side quests and stuff like that and I've never finished the main storyline <laughs> I just wanted yeah, to I, don't, I mean I say finish but I I mean to say like I finished playing it I don't actually know if I finished the main storyline I don't even really remember the main storyline I remember lots about it there there was some dragons and a lot of yelling yeah, yeah there I you go that. what a shouting but like but, yeah. I you know but like, there, but that's the thing. Like, we like even just in this conversation, like, there's some games that work for us and some games that don't. And with there being more and more games available, like, there's more and more room to for you to find something that works for you. Like, well, that's it. And they, I think it's also partly because the technology has made it so much easier for people to make games in their basement. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so cool to see people like Concerned Ape make Stardew Valley. You know, over the yeah. course of however many years, and the, the game is just phenomenal. Oh, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's it's got this huge following now. I mean, yeah, there's, it's 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 really cool, but it, it you're right, it does make it hard to like kind of wade through it and find the things that are going to work for you. And it's like, a double edged sword. Yeah, it doesn't. Most being... swords are. I don't really care <laughs> because I don't know a single edged sword. It's uh, just like, it's yeah. soft. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, but there are like you almost have to develop the skill of how to how to shop for games, uh, both both role playing games and board games and 
uh, like video games. Like you, you have to know how to shop. You have to know the words and stuff like that. And that's and yeah. going back to the artistic point, some look really good. Yes, <laughs> but they're terrible, right? Well, I yeah. think that's the problem. I was talking about this the other day, and I remember the sort of original Tomb Raider on the on the PlayStation PS One. Mm. You know, with all its sort of clunky graphics and stuff. But again, it gave you. It sort of worked because you could kind of impose your own kind of overlay onto that. Yeah. And, you know, you were sort of looking for an entrance. You were sort of working within a bigger space. And then it's just, and this is a problem. I mean, I, you know, I look at games now and I'm a little bit sort of out of the industry. And it just, it, it, it gives me palpitations just thinking about the amount of work that has to go into just, you know, creating a, a scene of the world. You know, it, it's huge and it's, and, it, and it's so visually driven. Um, that you know, to a degree that I mean, I, that's beautiful and it's amazing, and, and people want that sort of spectacle. But it, it, it's not all of it, and it's not, you know, the, the again, I keep coming back to this, and this is, you know, I suppose why I sort of prefer these days to sort of sit and, and create things than, than than to sort of be more passive, interactive in that way. That you know, it, it doesn't, it can't match a group of people going you know, on an adventure together, having a story together, building a creation together, you know, around a table and, and what happens. Because I suppose, you know, ultimately, if, if what you're getting from these things is, is memories, your, your memories of that tend to be a lot more real than. Oh, absolutely. Know, yeah, that's you know, true. That's, yeah. And I think to me, that is exactly the path that a lot of people take. Like for me, I played a lot of video games and I still do. And then I got to board games. And then from board games, when I pivoted to role playing games and I realized that oh I don't I don't need to use these rules this way I can kind of mm -hmm. you know it then it became I think the only drawback to role playing games as we've all experienced is you need friends and you need time <laughs> so the second best option is okay I'll just play a video game because that's a single player role playing game you know I don't need to worry about <laughs> the other yeah. voicing fifty NPCs yeah <laughs> although I'll try well that's you you, you clearly enjoy the voices. <laughs> I yes. do, and I'm very impressed that you that you've seen Malevolent. That's actually very funny. I'm I'm surprised. I, I yeah, I mean, I, well, I, I saw. I think it was on Discord server or something. You mentioned you got an award, so well done. Thank um, you. Yeah, I came I came runner up, but it was still I still won second place in the Discovery yeah. Pods Award, and I was right Absolutely. behind a massive show. I, I've, I've started listening to the um, Appalachian uh, yeah, Adventures as well, but um, I mean, they're much gods. better. They have a full orchestra oh, i've looked at the about page there's there's like serious cast and crew going on isn't there but yeah. i like I, the malevolent i mean malevolent is like you know what's not to like lovecraftian investigations in an arkham sort of style i was, I was like yeah you know, yeah. That, that, that's me. but i, I was I, I really like the conceit of it that i think you know what struck me as clever about it um and perfect for audio is that is that sort of um that you've got the protagonist and the narrator so that you know it is it's very much like a game experience that the, the... well and it's funny because that is what sort of inspired it i i yeah. i i love horror and i love call of cthulhu and i've always i've been a keeper for many many years and i run rpgs constantly and and i i wanted to do something after i lost my job something that i could do entirely myself mm. and i sort of debate it but and this is going to cause a lot of flack if anyone sees this, but no one's watching for me. <laughs> no one watching for me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I don't like horror podcasts that just tell stories. And there's so many of them where they just narrate. They're just sort of like narration podcasts, which are fine, but they're definitely not my cup of tea. Yeah. You know, to sit down and, and just read a scary story and add some sound effects, to me, it's like, you know, it's like kind of anyone could do that. Anyway, uh, so I was like, I, if I'm going to do this, I want to make a story and I yeah, want to make yeah. something that has a reason to be telling a story. I don't want someone to walk into a room and be like, oh, I'm in this room and here's a chair. It's like, that makes no sense. So that's how it sort of came to. But it is very much a game. It is very much Call of Cthulhu inspired, which is why it, mm -hmm. I think it, it does appeal to those role players that listen. So, But again, thank you. That's Anyway, that's not what we're here about. We're here about you and... Uh, and uh, and all of the amazing art that you have done and will continue to do for for sigil and I'm really excited to see what else. Well, I hope I hope so. I always I always worry when I turn a bad piece in that it's going to be my last gig. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think, I think if anything, now. I was going to say the the amount of time that you've been with sigil and and a close friend of Aaron, I think I think you're pretty safe in terms of I think at this point if he was going to get rid of you, he he would get rid of you a lot. You know, earlier. So it he's might quietly be like, oh, yeah, that's great. We're not using that, but I don't think they get rid of you. 
I know that feeling. I've had it a few times. Oh, this is great, Harlan. Why is oh. the, you never posted it anyway? Oh, uh, weird. Yeah. No, that was fantastic. And uh, and honestly, thank you so much for hanging out with us and, and coming in. No, and thanks for the offer. It's, it's nice to, uh, like I said, bef you know, before we started, it it, it the, it's nice that Sigil is getting bigger. It's nice that it's more of a sort of community. So you know, I'm quite keen to sort of you know get involved a little bit more. And uh, yeah. I guess there's people all over the world now. And so. Well, it's been really nice for us too, as more of the outsiders, Ellen and myself, to come in and see and and be a part of this community. And you know, having this show and getting to meet all of you and and getting to talk to you, it's been a really cool way to sort of bring the community together, which I think is sort of the unintended side effect of of getting to do this show. Yeah, it's it's been it's been fun. It's been interesting too to like see just how how far does Sigil go? Because like when when we joined, I feel like we were like I was like, oh, here's this little teeny thing that I know that Sigil does that I'm jumping on, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, no, Sigil's everything, and it's, Sigil's it's really everything. fun to see that. <laughs> Almost like they're taking over the Discord. No. Yeah. Anyway, John, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has we been an absolute have, blast. We do have oh, one last piece of news that I got like. We got told in the middle. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, Sigil is accepting submissions for the Savage Sign issue three, which is a uh, Savage Worlds sort of magazine thing that Sigil Ooh. publishes. Um, yeah, there are um, submission guidelines are available on Sigil's website, um, and Bam. you can get uh, issues one and two are available on Drive Through RPG if you want to check that out. Hey, there you go. Good stuff. That's fantastic. So, so yeah, there you there go. You go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for mentioning that, Ellen. I would have totally missed it. John, thank you again so much for hanging out with us. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you in two weeks with another guest on Sigil Spotlight. Uh, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Look at that.